Hey, Martina, welcome. Welcome to the summit. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you for inviting me. That's a huge and great and nice opportunity. Oh, well, I'm so happy to have you here. You are in Milan right now, and I'm here in North America on the East Coast. And uh, we've got a really interesting thing to talk about today. This topic is called Green Bubbles. Uh, you do you and a whole group of you are doing something amazing in Europe and and I'm not going to take up all this time to talk I want you to go right into this and talk about what green bubbles is all about this is very exciting thank you Lori for this introduction uh, yes you're right uh, I here represent a consortium for a research project and it is actually the the European funded project about scuba diving and about sustainable scuba diving. Uh, the project is uh, called Green Bubbles, and it has just started, so we have huge ambitions. And it's a, it's a very complex project, and that's why it's very ambitious. And it covers anything related to sustainability in scuba diving. Um, what we really like in this project is uh, that it doesn't address just one aspect of sustainability while it deploys a real holistic approach to the issue of sustainability. Which basically means uh, we tend to think that sustainability is only environmental, but that's just a very limited part of the problem. Because whoever wants to behave environmentally and is also running a business needs to balance the two things. Although you may be willing to behave environmentally sustainable. If your business is not viable, you will never be able to do so. That's why um, we will keep the three pillars of sustainability in focus, which are, of course, environmental, but also economic and social. The social part is, is very important in the diving industry for two reasons. If we think of tropical destinations, typically in developing countries, one of the main issues in social sustainability relates to um, differences between owners that typically do not belong to the population, to the local population, and the local population itself. So it's a matter of equity. Uh, this may not be the, the case uh, in, uh, in Europe, for instance, but we still do have big issues for the use of the same resources by different users, like fishermen, like other tourist clusters, and scuba divers. So um, you can imagine, and that's quite clear, that in crisis periods, like the one we are getting through now, all these uh, frictions may become real conflicts. And again, money is involved. So I'm not stressing money because that's the only thing that rules the world. But it's a very important thing we need to think of. And here in Green Bubbles, we believe that if we keep that in focus, we can make diving profitable, but also sustainable from the environmental point of view and the social point of view. Yeah. This and the is, other thing oh, this, is, this is great because um, people uh, have the belief that when we go into sustainability, it's all about the environment and, uh, and, and that's going to affect their bottom line. So. Uh, that we, what you're doing is really focusing it on the, the, the key resistance factor, the key belief that is stopping us from moving into this, this new business model uh, by focusing in on the fact that it, you have to be a sustainable business. You have to make a profit in order to be able to protect the environment and be a good um, corporate or business citizen in the society that you work in. So this is this is so important and is it we have to get this point across uh, to the dive industry in general which is what you are doing this is so great so carry on I didn't mean to interrupt no and we really believe that the things are not clashing you can be really green and that can give you profit it's just a matter of turning the tide and make that happen and sometimes it's just in our minds in our brain we also believe because most of us come from the diving industry or from the diving world, we are in green bubbles, we are nine entities. And I would say that six of them are made by the vast majority by scuba divers. 
be them um, biologists, environmental scientists, doctors, uh, marketing uh, uh, people or um, people who work on uh, equipment. So we all know that diving is important in life. Is we, we owe so much to scuba diving for our personal life, our professional life, and it also tells us that diving can do a lot for society. Usually when you think about scuba diving, uh, if you come from the environmental research group, uh, you tend to think that scuba diving brings environmental negative impacts. And that's part of the story, of course. We are not hiding that. If you come from uh, the group working on tourism research, social science, um, economic science, then you look at the bright side of scuba diving because it brings re revenues to the local population, for instance. But that's a very uh, limited uh, view. There are so many benefits that you can get through scuba diving. And there are real social benefits, like empowering people. We all know scuba divers are passionate about what they do, and they cut across any layer of society. So you have people with the most varied backgrounds. They come from everywhere in the world, dive everywhere in the world, and they have stories to tell. And they tell this story in a passionate way. So they are the best uh, testimonials about ocean optimism and why we should protect our ocean. And that's amazing. And we need to build upon that. And another incredible aspect of scuba diving is how they can empower people and make people better individuals. I'm thinking about disabled people who have lost faith and hope and they can regain this faith and hope and strength. Or also there are programs that take disadvantaged people from difficult social background and empower them because scuba diving is a lot about leadership, is a lot about uh, believing in yourself, taking responsibility, going beyond your own limits, doing something that is totally unnatural if you think about it. And it's about discovering, uh, takes you very close to science and technology. So there is a bulk of opportunities if you really want to dig into scoop to dive into scuba diving deeply and be open-minded to make scuba diving a real uh, powerful leverage for society. So, so this, well, is, this is well this is exactly what what uh, we believe um, as well is that we are perfectly positioned in the industry to be powerful voices for change because we are we do teach leadership we do teach empowering people we have incredible um, uh, experiences to offer that change people's lives and so what you're doing with Green Bubbles um, to start w going down the sustainability pathway with uh, uh, various operators uh, that is empowering them to be leaders for change to protect the ocean and 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 actually be much better businesses this is this is uh, it's so exciting we tend to leave out the social aspect the social benefits of scuba diving and yet it is such a social sport uh, and we and we, you know it's such a small community um, it's it, it enables us to all get together on a summit but then our our voices ripple out and uh, we were, when I was talking to Stefan Gosling the other day um, he was he was talking about you know the data but as I was reading all of his work I realized um, when he was speaking that um, uh, we can have all this data that tells us things but we it's really hard to factor in uh, the this human spirit and our our industry is full of passion and full of human spirit and we uh, our, our enthusiasm and our passion and our ability to connect with people um, and empower them it, it, it puts us in the perfect position to be able to operate in a different way and to get other people to operate in a different way and I'll get off my soapbox now <laughs> You know, by definition, scuba diving is an immersing experience. And that's the only way by which you can 
really touch base with people, reconnect them with nature, give meaning to the experience they are taking. And that's where you can trigger interest and then you can pass the message. If this needs to be done, then you have also people that know everything already and are the testimonials. So it's a real incredible opportunity. Well, can you tell me all of the, the incredible uh, people that are involved in your, your green bubbles? You know, you've got, you, you told me there are nine. So who, who's involved? Okay, so first of all, I'm not the coordinator, but I'm in charge of the communication areas, among other things. That's why I'm here as a front person. But I'm, again, not the coordinator, because the coordinator is uh, the University of Marke, which is a university based right on the Adriatic Sea, which is a basin in the Mediterranean Sea. And they will work a lot on two sides. One is environmental science, related in the project, and the other part is uh, um, 3D modeling, because again, visuals are very important whenever you want to pass conservation messages through. Then it's us. We are a small company, but basically uh, we wanted to keep doing research, and we decided we can do it independently, decided with whom we want to work with and on what we want to work so that's why we, we managed to, to have this project approved, which is exactly what we wanted to do. After many years, getting there, building the consensus around it. And again, we are marine biologists, and that's why we are so passionate about it. Then there is another small company, again, based in Italy, and they are um, engineers working on IT, and marine biologists too, so they will support the 3D modeling and visual development. Then we have a Turkish company whose brand name is InnovaSub, and they work both in training of scuba divers, also uh, commercial divers, and uh, developing devices and equipment that will support much of the work we are doing and they are also engineers. They invest a lot in developing tools for safety while diving. Which takes me to Dan. Indeed, they have strong cooperation with Dan. In this project, we have two Dan members. You know, Dan is a network of organizations. A huge part of it is Dan Europe, which we have in. And then we have Dan Southern Africa, which we have in as well. So the first one is made in Malta, and the other one is made in South Africa. But because the name is Southern Africa, it covers the whole of Southern Africa. And they will cover aspects related to safety, of course, not only in terms of uh, uh, safety underwater, water, but any aspect of safety. So even on the land, on the boat, because this relates to social aspects. You want to ensure that nobody gets injured and any best practice in diving is holistically considered. Then we have uh, the NHTV University of Applied Science, which is a Hochschule in uh, Holland, the Netherlands, in Breda. And they have very uh, different uh, skills <clears throat> and background. In this project, they will work on gamification, and you hear that this uh, IT stuff keeps coming up, not only for safety, but also because we want to, um, to invest a lot in citizen science, and we believe that gamification can really support citizen science, which is yet another theme where scuba diving can do so much for society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's incredible. So you've got IT marketing, marine biologists, you've got the safety people at Dan, you've got engineers, um, you've yep. got uh, several universities involved with um, citizen science, the citizen science, which is a, is a big, it, this is big, this is, a, this is yep. not just a fad, this is a big target market for the dive industry, which yes. only a few are, are tapping into right now. And uh, you've got all of this, this modeling so that you've got the, uh, the, uh, the um, visual aspect of things covered and you've got the marketing aspect of things are covered. Uh, I, I, mean, 
two more partners. Oh my gosh. Because now we are at seven. And to close the cir circle, taken from uh, uh, NHTV in the Netherlands, they also work a lot on marketing and media. And this connects to the eighth partner, which is Northwest University in South Africa. And they will cover the social science and economies aspects related to sustainable tourism. And finally, we have a US-based entity, which is College of Exploration. And for me, it's a pleasure to speak about them because you may know there is a big movement called Ocean Literacy, which then led to ocean optimism and many other, is not only them, but many entities interacting. And they are among the initiator of this movement. So for us, it's a real privilege to have them in, although they cannot get direct uh, EU funding. So for them, it means it's a big commitment and they really believe in this initiative and in the power of this initiative. And they will cover the pedagogy aspects. Okay, so so I just want to interject here because um, this ocean literacy is a, is a huge piece that people don't realize. I don't think our dive industry does enough in teaching ocean literacy. Uh, when I was speaking to Jean-Michel Cousteau, he was saying that um, you know his father used to say we protect what we love, but yeah. um, what what uh, what we are learning is that we protect what we understand and love. And because we, we love the ocean, but we really don't understand how it works, it's so important that we see uh, it as, a, as you say, a holistic a whole um, uh, environment that needs to be protected and everything impacts everything else. So once we start to get ocean literacy, we really start to understand um, when protecting a particular species and how it all trickles through the entire system. And that's when we really, really start to understand how beautiful the ocean is, how fragile it is, how important it is. And the only way we can do that is through uh, ocean literacy programs. So this is, this is very, very big. And I, I didn't realize very you had difficult. that. Let me say very ambitious and very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but we are also very ocean optimistic. Yes, and ocean optimistic. Oh, it's, it's just, it, this, is, this is great. So um, uh, who's, who, who now is going to be uh, put through, it's a framework you have, it's a process that you're going to be putting um, a, a dive operators through. Can you tell us where it's going to be located and who are the initial uh, businesses that are going to be involved in this whole process of turning, uh, well, it's, it's, a, it's a project to help people become more sustainable. So who's involved in, in the initial? First of all, um, sort of disclaimer, as I started with, uh, we are, first of all, a research project because uh, it's very wrong what usual scientists do. Scientists believe because they know, it's just a matter of saying what people should do and people would do that, which is not the case. There are many reasons why people behave the way they behave. And you need to understand that. When you understand why people do what they do, then you should start understanding what you can do to make change, make them change in a meaningful way, and then you can start passing your message through. So, to do so, we cannot even say we do it in isolation. Otherwise, it would lead, no, would lead nowhere. We can only do this together with the diving industry itself. And that's where we need participation from any, it's a bad word, stakeholder involved. I love it. It's really a European project terminology. Jargon. I love it, though. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Anyway, we are, first of all, addressing divers, of course, staff, professionals, which it's incredible. They don't appear in literature. And they are so critical. They are the interface between operators, diving uh, people, and the environment. And nobody cares about them. To us, that's unbelievable. So we will team up with them. Operators, certifying agencies, and territorial authorities. So 
we have a nested approach in terms of where we want to do all of this because chaos is just around the corner and you need to keep entropy within certain limits. That's why we chose two case study locations. One will be based in Europe in the Portofino Marine Protected Area because that's one of the main destinations in the Mediterranean Sea and because I love it. And it's just massive. Like so the beautiful there. Oh, my it's gosh. beautiful. And uh, um, this doesn't mean that that's the only place where we will be working. So anyone else interested is more than welcome to team up and join. We also, I, I, I understood you will give all the contacts and links for that. So you, you will be allowed to join in, just drop us an email and we will start discussing about it. Um, the other case study will be in uh, Punta de Oro in Mozambique, which is one of the coldest coral reef destinations in the world. So it's a very peculiar place with the local marine protected area, of course. <clears throat> Therefore, we started we just started in January and we are developing the contact and the network. So we started establishing collaboration via memorandum of understanding with the local operators, diving center, schools. And please let me say that it's not a contract. We know that we are bothering operators and staff while they are working. Since I was, for instance, I was working as a diving instructor. I know exactly that you are so busy when you're doing your job, the last thing you want is scientists around bothering you. So it's a very flexible agreement that just says we are interested in teaming up with you. We are open to let you do what you need to do, provided you ask first. And when it's enough, we tell you, you need to go because we have our job to do. So it's very open and you retain the right to, to kick us out, let's say, whenever needed. That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the other part of it is, of course, if you allowed us to come talk to your staff, talk to your clients, look around to understand how things happen, of course, uh, no, inf no um, information, confidential information will be disclosed, but we will report to you because the idea is also to help you understand what happens in your own business. So beyond the guidelines or papers that we, of course, aim to publish, there will be a quick and immediate response that can already start helping you and your business. So immediate benefits from taking part yes. in this uh, based, so you're not going to keep your research um, until you publish, you're going to give it to them right away and as you go so that they we can... We started already because we had, uh, uh, during the kickoff meeting in February, we had the first uh, open day with the local operators in Portofino, which we already contacted beforehand. We had a questionnaire focus group to set the baseline, start setting the baseline. And the report about that has already been given back to them. So um, we knew that some topics would come up, but it was very nice to see that sitting around the table, establishing a mutual respect and trust relationship, new themes dared to come up. Yes, and I think that's this is a critical thing moving forward is um, uh, business can only travel at the speed of trust. Uh, yes. So as we as we move into new new ways of doing things, we need to trust the people that we're involved in to be able to do this together. So uh, before you even introduce what you're doing, you need to establish a, a fairly significant level of trust uh, because obviously these operators are going to open up their businesses to you, and uh, you have to show them that you're you're not going to uh, toy with them, not going to play with them. And the other thing that you said that I just want to um, highlight is uh, when you do sustainability, you need to establish a baseline just for all of our, our audience here. It's so important because you need to know where you are so you can see where the improvements are. You need to know what you were doing and then you can see how you change and, and what you're doing in the future, what you're doing now versus what you had as a baseline. It's so important to establish the baseline. So um, I just wanted to highlight that. Thank so, you. Sorry, continue. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And which, what you're saying, just takes me to <clears throat> a brief, uh, um, a brief sip of water. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, again, I would like to stress this is an ambitious project aiming at delivering guidelines and real things that can be put in practice right away because we will constantly interact with our base. So we will ask our operators and divers, are we going the right way? Is it, does it make any sense? When you put things in practice, they need to work. So initially in this first phase of the project, we will do the baseline assessment of all the layers <clears throat> we spoke about. Why this? Because we want to understand where issues are that need be tackled and where opportunities are that we can build upon. Right, so you're, you're going to tackle the social aspects, um, why people do what they do, um, etc. The, the social aspects of the, in, the social environment that they're working in, uh, the other people who are operating in the same, in the same waters, yeah. uh, uh, the kind of government, etc., the territorial uh, people that are involved in, in managing the NPAs, I'm sure there's a, the, the whole societal part of that. Yes. Then you're going to be at, at, um, uh, addressing the environmental aspect of this, the impact, etc. And but, but particularly you're going to be focusing in on um, how you can make improvements uh, to yes. businesses to make them more sustainable, more profitable, while incorporating all of these other things. So it's the the the, the triple, triple bottom line the, uh, yes. that you're working on. And that's where phase two will start. Based on the baseline assessment, we want to um, solve the issues and build upon the opportunities <clears throat> for them to materialize. And we see, as, as we said, there are really many opportunities just to, to explore and to make evident <clears throat> and finally, which is something that usually research projects don't do or don't do enough. And I can say that because I come from that part of the world and I, I am guilty of the same thing. As scientists doing research projects, we are happy when we come up with results. Prototype if we are happy with it or papers even better. That's not the end of the story. That's the beginning of the last step. That's something that will die in isolation. Nobody will know about it. It will, will help nobody. No real impact. So embedded in the research part of the project is also how to accompany the industry and the system in the take up, in the taking up, sorry, of our results which will be done, first of all, by keeping the interaction with the base. Is this correct? Are we going in the right direction? Is this piece of result meaningful to you? Or do we need to change something? So are you happy with this? Do you think you can use it? Or shall it be redesigned? And then, how can you incorporate it in your new business model? New business model is something that we will try to develop based on what we have studied and discovered throughout the project life. And of course, it will not be one business model for everybody. It, it needs to be tailor-made for different case studies. And accompanied with marketing plans. So all of this will be embedded in the project. And we believe that's the only way to really develop something that can be taken up and make change happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this is uh, this is incredible. There's there's been a number that's been bandied about uh, uh, in the industry. Well, the industry that talks about it, because a lot of the industry doesn't include scientists as part of our stakeholder group. Uh, I include them absolutely, and um, what the scientists themselves, um, the, this number keeps coming up, and they say about thirty percent of scientific work um, that's done around the oceans is actually um, being implemented. That's actually having a significant impact, 
and a lot of the other work, I don't know if it's 30%. We don't really know. It's just a number well, that people well, have thrown. Probably up. more. <laughs> yeah. That, um, uh, that uh, there's, there's still a significant amount of scientific research that just goes into a report, just goes into, you know, to get somebody's PhD or to keep themselves in a position at a university um, without it actually going out and being used and being disseminated so that people know what's going on. So you, you are addressing this, which is a big thing. I, I'm, I'm so glad to hear this because this, this comes up when I talk to people about, about sustainability and about how we need to include all stakeholder groups. Um, like the customer in, in our industry, customers aren't included in our stakeholder um, uh, pro, uh, profile or portfolio. Uh, scientists or nonprofits, uh, uh, marine conservation entities are kind of thrown into this kitchen sink um, grouping um, and they're, they're a very important part of where we're, where we're going. So uh, to see how your Green Bubbles is including all of these different stakeholders uh, in, in, the, in the research and in the solution and finding the opportunity so that, so you're not going to miss out on things. You're not working in a, an environment um, blind, you know, blindsided. You, you need to know what's going on. And uh, so you bring in all of these, these different people that have these different perspectives. And I'm sure it's going to be interesting to see how they they relate. This is where trust is really important. And uh, oh, it wasn't easy in the beginning, and that's why usually you have this kind of projects must have a kick of meeting that usually is around one or two days, and we spent an entire week just to find a common language, which is very important because otherwise we go nowhere. But we made it. Yes. Well, the, the thing that really um, uh, caught my eye when I, uh, somebody emailed me, I think it was your press release, um, someone uh, forwarded it to me, and I was just like, wow, this is, this is like, uh, it's something like Blue the Dive, but you guys are really diving deep, doing this research with, you know, all of these various universities and, and different stakeholders. This is really, really um, a fantastic thing, and then I saw that you were you were funded by the EU. I was just blown away. The EU would would be um, uh, very interested in just like the little dive industry. So it seems to me we're not just a little dive industry that kind of burbles away under the radar. Uh, we're now in the spotlight uh, uh, because of the kind of work that you're doing, and this keeps coming up that. Uh, we do bring a lot to the table because we're we're in the water. We see what's going on. We're running businesses. We see how things change. We we have access to a continuous, hopefully continuous stream of consumers who are divers who care too. So although we may be a small portion of the tourism industry or broader business, um, we are 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 hugely impactful if we want to be. So I think the EU saw that in your your uh, your uh, proposal because they gave you money uh, to do this, and you have you know heavy duty. You have to do it now. <laughs> you have to do it, <laughs> it, and it'll happen. You know, but that's the thing. You've got this big support system, and you've got universities involved, and you know. But it's it's everybody's involved in this. That that it really um, is involved in this whole holistic uh, environment that we actually work in. And I, I think it's going to be um, an incredible uh, case study, but the impact it's going to have and, and willingness to share, um, that increases the, the trust level. Um, we want to get back to you and, um, and, and find out what kinds of things are, are, are working. Have you, in your initial meeting, this is one of the things that I thought of, in your initial meeting with all the operators, what were some of the questions that they had that they were they were worried about what you know what you were going to be doing the 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 you know the the limits to their participation based on these beliefs that something bad was going to happen or something was not quite right uh, well that was a very uh, very good thing that we recorded maybe because it's a place where we already worked a lot, so we had already relationships established, and that's a very important thing. 
But one thing we noticed is uh, they trusted us nearly from the beginning. The only question that was absolutely normal, they asked it was, do we need to pay to get in? What do, or to, do we need to contribute anything? And basically, no. I mean, just uh, opening up your, your doors to us is all that we need. Right, because this is a, it's a research project, so yes. they, they are the, 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 the case studies, they are the models that you are going to be researching. They are the models, but also they are our informants, they are uh, our advisors, they are the people who really know about, and I must say, my background is in marine biology, I am a marine biologist. But I, I am very lucky because I spent years working <clears throat> as a dive master, as an instructor, as an underwater operator. And I did it not only in the Mediterranean Sea, but also in the Red Sea and in the Maldives. That's an incredible experience because it takes you in contact with so many different people. And it makes you understand that there is not there is nothing called as the general public. That doesn't exist. What the hell is the general public? We have individuals, and each person is different. So first of all, this is something that scientists hardly recognize, unless they come from the social science or economic sciences. So you need to set up a message for each target audience and you need to deliver that message in different ways according to the target audience and to the message you want to get through. And the other thing is uh, when you are a diving instructor or a professional, a dive master, you also become a bit of a psychologist. That's true. <laughs> it's just fascinating and it's engaging. So. After a while, I, I come from studying marine sponges, which are amazing organisms, but after a while you start wondering, okay, what am I adding to society? What is my work doing really for society? And that's a way uh, to pay back to scuba diving and to society, I believe, because I personally learned a lot just from being a scuba diver. And I want people to, to acknowledge that. Yes. And the same, I guess we get tired of the same old. I think the people that we're talking to um, in North America about Blue the Dive, that's the, you know, the promoting a sustainable dive industry, um, they're, they're getting tired of doing business the same old way and they're not seeing the results. And they really see what's happening in the ocean and they really want to make a difference and what kind of contribution can they make. So uh, this whole sustainable business model really shows how you don't have to do things on the side. You can actually incorporate your passion and your concerns and, and um, your ability to connect with your consumers, um, your, your, your people, your tribe, um, by, by, by running through the sustainable business model and, and, and adapting your business to that model. And you can, it's not like you have to do more, it's just you do things differently. And that's what you, you are going through. You are actually diving deep into these uh, particular operators' businesses and, and seeing what they can do differently and what they may be doing differently already um, that can be applied um, on a broader perspective that can be shared with everybody. And uh, this, this whole business of openness, like, I mean, obviously these operators in competition, but they're, they're now, you know, they're willing to be open and willing to share. And this is all part of the sustainable business model. Um, and let me interrupt you because you raised two important points that I would like to, to build upon. First, <clears throat> we expected that putting together operators operating in the same area now in a crisis period would raise conflicts because we know that some of them do have conflicts. That didn't happen and that was amazing. It was clear that they were there because they saw an opportunity 
for the industry to improve and be more sustainable under each of the three pillars. And it was also very good to see that by being uh, out of the competition, we are external. <clears throat> we could provide independent advice or help. So that's very important. And it was so nice and uh, we took it as a sign that they came and they were talking to each other in the focus group, sitting next to each other, raising issues, points, but in a real uh, positive and proactive and collaborative way. That's the way forward. And the second thing is, although we have this uh, uh, huge critical mass, <clears throat> we know that, first of all, there are other initiatives ahead of us. And I'm, of course, talking not only about your initiative and the other initiatives you are gathering around, but we are establishing contacts uh, with the Green Fins, for instance. Yes. And Blue the Dive. And Blue the Dive. <laughs> and it's good to say this because otherwise we would sound like we are restarting the wheel. Uh, sorry. Uh, reinventing. Yeah. Reinventing the wheel where there is no need to do that. There are already things going on, great things. So where this is already happening, we may just help connecting the dots or just learn from other experiences. And it's very important for us to connect with these initiatives to see where we can complement them. We have a, a good research power that we can make, put at disposal of initiatives that need that and we can learn. <clears throat> and in four years' time, the idea is that we are really a network of operators, divers, professionals, NGOs, initiatives, because it's one ocean, and we are part of it, and we have the same goal. Yes, exactly. We are all, we are all connected. Whether On the we... same oh. <laughs> Whether we believe it or not, we are all connected. Well, it is It is so amazing when I started doing this, uh, preparing for this summit. Well, last summit was the same thing. People just started to come out of the woodwork. And this year, there's. it's been uh, incredible to see. Uh, I call it the, uh, this is what I say. I say the tribe is gathering from yeah. all over the world. And, and it's very clear that there's many of us that are on the same page, that we need to address the issues that are affecting our industry and our world. We can use our businesses as vehicles for change. We can be the voices because we see the stuff. We are the, as one of my, my cohorts um, in the Blue the Dive says, we are the canaries in the coal mine. We, we see this and we can talk about this and we can talk about it knowledgeably and uh, by working together we can improve everything uh, for everybody and it's a big it's a big shift but um, you know as this summit and as what you're doing is having a, a, with your group is that seemingly competitive uh, uh, entities are working together uh, in a collaborative fashion for the for the good of all and um, a trust is super important. Uh, we need to trust each other in order to move forward, and um, and this is this is just the beginning. You know, this is it's just it's just amazing because I saw you on the coral list, and I saw Chloe on the coral list, and I saw Julian on the coral list, and it's because um, one of the dive operators is a good friend of mine, Steve Musman, is on the coral list, and he put out some questions, and it was just. All these scientists started to come together, all of these different marine conservation people all started to come together and all started to share things on, at a very different level because we all know we're all in the same boat. And, and this, is, this is where we're going, is we're just going to have more of these collaborations. We're going to have what, what you are doing is you're, you're drawing people in um, because of your outlook and your openness and your trust. And uh, we're, I just want to... I want to hear more. I want to hear. I want to hear how it's going. I want to stay in touch with you, and and we want to collaborate on the blue the dive level. We want to collaborate with Green Fins, who uh, we're also interviewing with Chloe, 
uh, it's uh, and reef check. I mean, there are in, we need to realize that there's some incredibly positive things happening, incredibly positive that are not being covered, you know, yeah. and, and we need not to bring this up, like, you know, and you really so, need to, you know, be positive. It's happening. It is happening. It is really happening. Well, listen, Martina, it, as always, it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to speak with you on Skype and see you. And, and uh, we're going to do more of this um, after the summit is over and stay in touch. And you are going to be providing um, a, a bunch of resources for people, links and helpful hints and all that kind of thing, uh, so that we'll have that available for our audience, those who sign up. And uh, I just want to say... Thank you so much for what you are doing. This is... Thanks to you, Laurie. It's, it's incredible. A Just incredible. Well, listen, you take care, and we're going to stay in touch. And audience, uh, we are going to be doing more of these interviews, so please stay tuned. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye.